this is it. Putin signs a military draft order and hints us about the martial law. And up to 420,000 extremely inexperienced Russian soldiers might enter war very soon. But more about all of this in just a couple of minutes. What's up, investors? It's the Russian youth. And let's get straight to the point and talk about some ridiculous Russian propaganda. <laughs> so, we had one of these TV shows in Russia recently, and one of older women looked suspiciously familiar. Almost if it's her name would be Evgenia Prigozhina. Let me know what do you think, how familiar this face is to you. What is the probability you think this is a real Prigozhin? Please let me know in the comments. Personally, I think it is somewhere between 0.42 and 0.69%. Oh, and by the way, almost, almost forgot. Speaking about percentages. 48.2% of you guys are still not subscribed to my channel. And I know perfectly well who are you. Felix, Anthony, Mark, Jimmy, Johnny and Brett. Now it's your time. Don't be shy, boys. We want you as a part of the Russian Dude Army. So yeah, just go ahead and hit this like button and subscribe to my channel. You're more than welcome here. You can also follow me on Instagram. I recently created a group there for everyone to join, where I'll be sharing some memes and behind the scenes photos, and the link will be down below. But okay, now let me give you just a couple of words about the new favorite ally of Putin. <laughs> then we'll go to the east of Ukraine and talk about Ukrainian saboteurs entering the territory of Russia. Then we'll go to the south of the country and talk about Russians accidentally intercepting their fighter jet and we'll finalize everything with the new mobilization in Russia. And so yes, in this first video you can see one very notorious organization from Afghanistan starting with Tali and ending with Ban. Uh, and they were pretty much meeting Russians and trying to establish mutually beneficial cooperation. So basically Putin now has one more his favorite friend, this uh, extreme organization in Afghanistan, I cannot say it unfortunately due to YouTube censorship, but you know what I'm talking about. Then we have North Korea and Iran. So I will be pretty curious what they can offer Russia. In the meantime, Ukrainian medics are continuing to be trained by the British comrades about the restorative surgery. At the same time, Switzerland will be allocating $109 million to Ukraine to help them demine the country, and also Slovakian volunteers assembled 650,000 euros and bought these Bozena 5 also demining machines that you see right now on your screen. Right, and now as promised, let's talk about the situation in the east of Ukraine before going to the south. But first of all, here is an extremely interesting thing. <laughs> so recently, Putin allowed Ukrainians using their domestic passports to enter Russia visa-free. I mean, yes, that's the real law he recently signed. Well, some Ukrainians, they decided to take advantage of this right away and 50 the people from the diversion group of Ukrainians, they entered Bryansk and started doing some reconnaissance and some small combat activities against the local forces. At the same time, in another bordering region, Kursk, allegedly a Ukrainian drone was able to hit the electric station of the city, leaving some residential buildings without electricity almost for the entire night. But Russians could not even put out the fire all the way until the morning. But this is not the only thing that happened in Kursk recently. Because Ukrainians allegedly were also able to destroy a Russian anti-aircraft radar. And <laughs> here's the funniest part. According to Russians, this radar is able to detect very high stealth technology planes. But for some reason, 
it did not notice a simple Ukrainian drone. But okay, enough of Russia, now let's go to the east of Ukraine. And first of all, according to the report by the Institute for the Study of War, there are still some kind of combat activities along kupiansk svatovia Krimina front line, and Russians allegedly concentrated 110,000 soldiers along this specific front line, but recently the intensity of their offensive decreased significantly. With the only one probably exception is that in Kupiansk region, Russians were able to destroy a Ukrainian bridge over this river, as you can see from this video. And in response to that, Ukrainians were able to destroy a pretty large artillery, rocket artillery firing position of Russians located in Popasne. And as you can see from this map, it is relatively far from the front lines. Then we also have some very good news from the south of Bakhmut, specifically is that Ukrainians were able to walk past Klishivka and Adrivka way further to the east from the borders of this city, allegedly being in the territories approximately somewhere here, which basically means we might see some further liberation to the south of Bakhmut very soon. And in addition to all that, Ukrainians continue to use their own developments, such as for example this reconnaissance drone called Shark, and it will allow them to easily find and destroy Russian military targets. So yes, and now let's briefly talk about the south of Ukraine, and then we'll talk another upcoming mobilization in Russia. And first of all, here is an extremely interesting six-minute video about the rescue of one Ukrainian soldier who was drifting in the Black Sea for more than 14 hours, and then he eventually he was rescued by his comrades. This happened several weeks ago whenever Ukrainians were able to liberate Boyko Towers located in the Black Sea. And if you remember, this was one of the very first events that started the raids of Ukrainians against Crimean Peninsula, which culminated in Ukrainians destroying the headquarters of the Russian Black Sea Navy located in Sevastopol. And so here is another interesting part. So take a listen. So those Russian officers who are pretty much uh, burying their fallen comrades as a result of this attack, they had uh, some kind of a feast. And unfortunately, seven of them got food poisoning, two of them were eliminated. So the rampage of Ukrainians against Russian occupiers in Crimea continues, even by these measures. And in addition to all of that, Ukrainians released this 7 plus minutes video of the compilation of them destroying Russian military objects and equipment in the southern regions. This just show how many of them were destroyed in a pretty short period of time and most of it were recorded using the drones. You can see the full uncensored version of this video on my Patreon, because unfortunately YouTube does not want to give me a break. And at the same time, this is a great way to support the channel, starting only at $4 for the entire month. Please go ahead and check it for yourself, there is one week of free access and the link is down below. Thank you so much. In response to that, Russians did something what they are very proficient in. They destroyed the local civilian infrastructure in Kherson, which allegedly was just a catering place. As we move a little bit to the east, to Zaporozhye nuclear power plant, where just a couple of days ago International Atomic Energy Agency acknowledged that yes, there are Russian mines. And today they also mentioned that this power plant should become and should be returned under immediate control by Ukrainians as soon as possible. And speaking about the combat activities, specifically along the Zaporozhye front lines, right here is the video of Lipar 2 tank in action, and it shows how extremely mobile and agile this tank can become in covering its infantry. And believe it or not, we have another one interesting news coming to us close to Tokmak. So recently a Russian fighter jet Su-35 was flying above the city and then mysteriously um, somehow it got intercepted by friendly fire of its air defense system. Which just confirms us once again that whenever Russians do want to intercept aerial targets, they're perfectly capable of doing this. And ultimately, as we go to Berdyansk, located all the way away from the current front lines, 
Local residents were able to report some loud noises happening during that night, and then also Russians started enforcing their defense structures around the city. And I mean, just take a look. This is the very last city away from the front lines. This is literally next to Azov Sea, so Russians are already preparing to defend it. Pretty much they kinda assume that Ukrainians might liberate territories to the north of it, and maybe very soon. And Russians, they obviously understand this as well. They also perfectly know about the critical lack of resources, both human and military machines, that they're experiencing right now. So just they just have to do another mobilization, in case they want to stay active and not to lose this war by the end of the year. And among the very first hints that Russia is planning to do another mobilization very soon, once again started coming to us from already familiar Andrei Kartapolov, who recently mentioned that right now Russia is developing the brand new, world-class, the best standard potentially <laughs> mobilization in the world, which takes into consideration all the previous mobilization mistakes. And right now it will be extremely and highly effective. Even one of Russian government agencies, Roskomnadzor, it mentioned that it will be testing the mobile service during, pay attention here, during the event of the martial law. I only can guess why would they do it? At the same time, Russia literally skyrockets the military budget, and in 2024, for the very first time, the military-related budget will exceed the social budget. The increase will be from 6.5 trillion rubles all the way to 11 trillion rubles, almost twice more, and it will be responsible for almost more than 30 percent of the entire budget of Russia. And guess what? The government introduced, heard, and then approved these budget adjustments for 2024, 25, and 26 only 11 minutes after the very first knowledge of these adjustments came to a public eye. That's right, you heard me right, it only took them 11 minutes for the entire process. And some people even make the assumptions that Putin is preparing for never-ending war, or at least for however long he's gonna last, because even some factories and plants, they are switching their regular civilian production and start producing at least some kind of military-related objects. And where will this money come from? Well, obviously, the very first thing is the increased taxes for regular people, who already live from paycheck to paycheck. But at the same time, oligarchs, the closest circle of Putin, will also have to chip in. I'm almost 100% positive that Putin will force them to do this, whether they want it or not. Because if they want to continue stealing money from the Russian budget, they have to contribute to this special military operation. And just when I was talking about that the military budget of Russia was increased, respectively for 2024, 25, and 26, just a couple of days later, Minister of Defense of Russia Sergei Shagu mentioned that this war, <laughs> I mean special military operation, if you're Russian watching this, it will last at least minimum until 2025. Once again, what an interesting coincidence. And even in Russian schools they actively started promoting serving in the army under the contract and also obviously being sent to Ukraine, because they started seeing more and more of posters like this, literally being attached to the blackboards in the classroom. But wait, you guessed it, there is more. Recently, Putin said that in the near future, Russia want to do a world countrywide training in case there is a martial law in the country and 70% of the infrastructure is destroyed. Once again, pretty suspicious coincidence. And the cherry on top was obviously given to us by the general staff of the Russian military. They mentioned that there are no talks about mobilization in Russia. Don't even worry about this, we'll just continue to recruit people under the contract and volunteers whoever want to serve in the military and fight in Ukraine. 
And just before you know it, this Friday, September 29th, Putin does sign a military draft order for 130,000 people, calling it just a routine conscription cycle. But according to some other Western military experts, such as for example British intelligence, they think that this real number should be somewhere close to 420,000, because just like last time, Russia announced only 300,000 people will be mobilized officially, but in reality this number was way higher. And most likely, these people will be sent to combat actions as soon as possible without proper military training, just to fill the gaps. Because after all, according to another report by the British intelligence, Russians already try to bring whatever scraps of forces they have across Ukraine to fill the gaps specifically in the east and some of them in the south, and already this existing soldiers, they do not show any high level of military preparations. And if these soldiers are extremely weak and unprepared, you can only imagine the level of these freshest conscripts that Putin just signed to go to Ukraine. Obviously they will never acknowledge this, but I'm telling you, this will happen. Looks like we might have a pretty big escalation in the near future, so if you don't want to miss any of the events that will be happening right now, just please consider subscribing to my channel, it only takes one click. Thank you so much patrons for your support and see you on Tuesday.